Let's move now from having control of the cut on the cheek area to a cut in that much more challenging region just above the eye, just below the eye, the eyebrow, or the eyelid. The reason it's much more challenging is that this particular cut has the potential of stopping a fight. Any bleeding that's not successfully controlled in this region can drip into the eye, interfering with vision and your fighter's ability to defend themselves. If that were to happen, it's quite possible the fight could be stopped due to this injury. That can be avoided by aggressive management of cuts in this location. The initial management of this is exactly the same. We'll get ice to the back of the neck to start the cooling off process. Take our swab that's been soaked with either the adrenaline or the thromboplastin. And now, we will take that piece of gauze that we have and place it over the swab. Place it directly into the cut. And what the piece of gauze is going to do is it's going to prevent the medication from dripping into the eye. The end swell goes over that with direct pressure. Your free hand is now available as before to apply additional Vaseline to the face or to move the ice bag around towards the chest. You're gonna hold that in there with firm pressure for the duration until the whistle blows, the end swell comes off, the swab comes off, a plug of cold Vaseline gets placed into the wound, retrieve your ice bag, and your fight is good for one more round. The bell has rung, your fighter returns to the corner, and it's obvious that the cut he sustained over his eye in the prior round is now re-bleeding. If you remember from the cut on the cheek, that now transitions to a two-stage process to manage that bleed. The initial step, however, is still the same. Let's get some cooling going on, place the ice bag to the back of the neck, take a new swab, soak with whatever medication you're using, the adrenaline or the thromboplastin. You're gonna wrap it in the gauze to protect any medication from dripping into the eye. Apply it with direct pressure. You're gonna use Vaseline across the face, the forehead, the ears, where you can move the ice bag across the chest for additional cooling. And remember, with the re-bleed, two-part process, out of the corner of your eye, Monitor the movement of the ring card as it goes around the ring. When it's completed half of the distance of the ring, you know that you only have half of the amount of time left. Remove the end swell, remove your swab, take your abatine, and because it's a solid, it's a powder, nothing is gonna drip. Place it right into the wound with direct pressure. Continue to cool your fighter down. When the whistle blows, Remove the abatine, remove the ice bag, place a plug of cold Vaseline into the wound, and you should be good for one more round. At the conclusion of every subsequent round, when the fighter returns to the corner, if the fighter has sustained a cut, in addition to applying the ice pack to the back of the neck, you need to do an assessment. Is that bleeding controlled, or is there active bleeding? If the bleeding is controlled, that is, there is no active bleeding, I would still manage it aggressively using, if it's a cut on the cheek, I would use a swab with the end swell as demonstrated before. One step process. If the cut was above the eye, but it's not actively bleeding, I would use the swab with the gauze, apply directly into the cut, with the end swell as we looked at in the prior segment. If there is re-bleeding, the process will be the same except there'll be that second step. That is, the swab and the end swell for the cheek cut go on first. You would monitor the movement of the ring card around the ring. When a person has completed half of the distance of the ring, the 
the swab comes off, the swab comes off, and the avatine goes into place, the whistle blows, the avatine comes off, a plug of cold Vaseline gets placed into the cut, and your fighter should be good for one more round. If it was a cut above the eye, that is re-bleeding. Remember, anytime there's a re-bleed, I personally will use a two-step process. Start with the swab, wrapped in the gauze, and cold and swelling into place. While that's going on, I can either do additional cooling with the ice bag or the application of the thistle Vaseline. At the same time, I'm watching that ring card move around. When they've covered half the distance, the end swell comes off, the swab comes off, the avatine goes into place, the whistle blows, the avatine comes off, Vaseline, which is ice cold, goes into the wound, the ice bag comes out, your fight is good for one more round. Now that you have successfully controlled the cut and there's no active bleeding, there is one very important point that needs to be emphasized in any discussion regarding the management of cuts, and that is your role to use your training and your experience to protect your fighter. Recalling the diagram that we looked at earlier, the eye is located within a bony region called the orbit. Any blunt force from a punch, a headbutt, or an elbow that was significant enough to cause a cut or a bleed is probably also significant enough to cause a fracture to the bone in this region. And that could put your fighter's vision and safety at risk. So what I do, anytime there's a cut in that region, I always ask the fighter, can you see okay? Straightforward, basic question. If there's any doubt or concern in your mind, then ask the ringside doctor to evaluate your fighter before continuing the bout. I hope you have found these videos helpful. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to contact me at nycutman at gmail. Thank you.